good morning students and welcome back to another video lesson from the chapter work energy and power in the previous lesson i had told you about the scientific interpretation of work done how the concept of work in science differs from the general conception of this term that we had discussed in full detail today we shall discuss what is meant by energy what are its different forms and out of the different forms of energy we shall be discussing one form of energy in full detail so let's begin today's discussion by the question what is meant by energy anything that can do work is said to have energy the work a body can do is a measure of its energy a body possessing more energy can do more work so thus energy may be defined as the capacity of a body to do work so the amount of energy possessed by a body is equal to the amount of work it can do when that energy is released the si unit of energy is joule quite often a bigger unit called kilojoule is used 1 kilo joule is equal to 10 to the power 3 joules energy is a scalar quantity now there are many different forms of energy as you can see mechanical energy electrical energy magnetic energy chemical energy thermal energy or or what is commonly known as heat energy nuclear energy you can see the different examples for the several forms of energy that we are commonly aware of like in mechanical energy you can see the example of a leaping frog and a moving car in case of thermal or heat energy you find the examples of melting of ice cream heating soap in electromagnetic energy you have radio waves infrared radiation visible light in electrical energy you have the lightning and power lines in chemical energy you have the striking matchstick or the food that we eat in nuclear energy you have nuclear fusion and nuclear fission all these are the different types of energy in this lesson we shall be describing only about mechanical energy so what is mechanical energy energy by the virtue of which a body can do some mechanical work directly it's called mechanical energy so energy by the virtue of which a body can do some mechanical work directly is called mechanical energy the common forms of mechanical energy it is of two forms kinetic energy and potential energy at 
this point you should understand that the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy is called mechanical energy so the sum total of kinetic energy and potential energy possessed by a body is equal to the total mechanical energy of that particular object or a system so today we shall be discussing about kinetic energy flowing flood water can wash away huge structures such as railway lines and bridges water flowing out of a dam can run a turbine to generate electricity the flowing wind during a storm can uproot big trees the flowing wind can run the blades of a windmill and can be used for producing electricity or for doing some mechanical work a fast moving bullet can penetrate the human body thick sheets of metal and logs of wood so we see that all moving bodies can do some work that is all moving bodies possess energy so we can say that the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion is called kinetic energy so a moving body can do some work due to its kinetic energy a high speed bullet a fast moving cricket ball a stone thrown with a high speed flowing wind and flowing water all possess kinetic energy now a question arises how is kinetic energy of a body expressed the total amount of work which a moving body could do before coming to rest i repeat the total amount of work which a moving body could do before coming to rest is equal to its kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of a moving body can be determined by measuring the total work it could do before coming to rest so let us derive the formula for kinetic energy for that we shall be considering a very simple diagram let us consider an object initially stationed at a position let now the object after a certain duration move to a different position given by b and comes to rest v is the velocity with which it is moving and f is the force which is working against the direction of displacement so let a body of mass m moving with the velocity v be at position a at any given time if this body moves against an opposing force f then its velocity gradually decreases let the body come to rest after covering a distance s at position b then 
total work done by the body will be equal to F multiplied by S but the total work done by a moving body before coming to rest is equal to its kinetic energy therefore kinetic energy of the body is equal to F multiplied by S let us assume it to be equal to equation 1 now for this body the initial velocity is equal to V final velocity is equal to 0 acceleration is minus a since the body is under retardation and distance traveled is equal to s so now we know that final velocity square minus initial velocity square is equal to 2 multiplied by acceleration multiplied by distance traveled this is the third equation of motion so substituting in this equation we get 0 minus v square equal to 2 into minus a into s so therefore v square is equal to 2 a s or we can write down a to be equal to v square by 2 s Now, by Newton's second law, force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, we can write down acceleration to be equal to F by M. Now, just compare these two equations. on comparing equation 2 and equation 3 we get f by m to be equal to v square by 2 into s or we can say f into s to be equal to half m v square now from equation 1 we get f into s is equal to kinetic energy therefore kinetic energy is equal to half m v square so, this is the expression for kinetic energy of a body. So, kinetic energy of a body having mass m and velocity v is equal to half m v square. Now, just by looking into this expression, what can we conclude? So, from the formula of kinetic energy, we can conclude that when the velocity of a body is kept constant, if velocity is kept 
constant kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass so if mass is doubled kinetic energy is also doubled and if mass is reduced to half kinetic energy of the body also gets halved now this is the first conclusion coming to the second kinetic energy is directly proportional to square of velocity or speed mass is constant so this means if velocity is doubled kinetic energy increases how many times four times similarly if the velocity of a body is reduced to half then its kinetic energy gets reduced to one fourth now let us find out a relation between kinetic energy and momentum now we know momentum p is equal to mass into velocity so this gives us v to be equal to p by m now since kinetic energy is equal to half mv square so we can write down kinetic energy to be equal to half multiplied by m into in place of v we will put p by m whole square so then we get kinetic energy to be equal to half into p square by m or we can write down p square to be equal to 2m into kinetic energy which will give us p to be equal to root over 2m into kinetic energy so we can write down momentum to be equal to root over 2 into mass multiplied by kinetic energy so this is the relation between momentum and kinetic energy of a body so that will be all for today we shall be discussing about the next form of mechanical energy in the coming video lesson thank you